Okay, so <clears throat> we're talking partition tables, and you've both worked with partition tables, whether you know it or not, because tables are always partitioned. All we're arguing about is whether or not it has multiple partitions. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. And it seems like it might be a dumb distinction, but it's not because there are so many features in SQL that you have to actually turn on, right? You don't have to turn this on. You just have to say, <clears throat> oh, by the way, I want to I, I want to give it multiple partitions. So, since it is already partitioned, <clears throat> then you get you you get a nice little technique for free. And that technique is <clears throat> being able to switch partitions. Let me move this over here. So <clears throat> there are a couple rules that we'll talk about in a minute, but <clears throat> I'm going to do this from this table. So I'm going to say select into, uh, let's call it part two from part. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to select into uh, this table all the data from this table. And there's a, probably about 80 something thousand rows in there. And let's go ahead and make it interesting and say where one equals zero, right? So I'm just gonna create an empty table. There we go. Now, if I want to move all of the data from this table, into this table, all you have to do is a partition switch. And it's instantaneous for the most part. Um, there are times when it's not, but I think those are those are uh, times when it's mostly like really, really big tables. And there used to be a bug that I hope got fixed. But anyway, so <clears throat> if I do this now, if I say alter table part, and switch it to part two, what that does is that just takes all of those tables pages and assigns them to the other table. So no data is moved. It just says, oh, by the way, you now belong to this other table. And that's it. It's a metadata switch. <clears throat> so now when I do this, and you're going to see, we should probably get an error here. Yep. So it failed because there's a clustered index on the first table that isn't on the second table. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's create this on part two, right there. So I'm gonna create the clustered index. There we go. And now I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna switch this data into here and it's done. I just moved 80 something thousand rows that fast <clears throat> by nothing but metadata. And it has, of course, completely emptied this table, but, you know, that's the price of fame, right? So this issue came up <coughs> because we need to, there's a, a table with 17 million rows in it, and we need to run a big delete. And the delete is going to actually delete 16 million rows. So why would you delete 16 million rows when you can just copy 1 million, right? So there are a couple ways we could do this. <clears throat> we could create a new table and copy that data uh, and copy that 1 million rows into the new table and then rename that new table. Or we could switch it out and then copy it back in to the original table after we truncate it. Now, the reason why I want to do a switch is because I don't like moving schema. And moving schema means dropping and recreating objects so that their object IDs are always different, right? Um, it's not a huge deal when you have to do it, but we don't have to do that here, right? So what we can do is create this table, make sure you've got the index on there, right? Um, switch the data out and then copy 
that one million rows back in. And I mean, to copy a million rows will still only take a minute or so, right? It still won't be that bad at all. But we've also mm -hmm. kept the same object ID and, uh, and we've greatly lessened our, uh, our operation. So when you're doing stuff like this, a lot of times it's better to look at the amount of data that you're going to be moving and maybe reverse the operation. Now, I said that there were some, there were some uh, restrictions on this, right, on switching data. Um, one of them is, of course, you have to have the same clustered index. Okay, I'll give you that. The second one is it can't cause any data movement. So when would we be able to do this when it wouldn't cause any data movement? How do we avoid data movement in, in a case like this? Anybody? It's only the metadata moment, right? Right. When, when we do the switch. Oh. But if you switch data to another table, it's highly possible that the data actually gets moved, right? That it actually gets copied. When would that be? V, do you have any you have any guesses? Um <clears throat> You're saying uh, this when we run this alter table switch, uh, at that time we'll have data movement. Well, I'm saying that you're not allowed to have data movement during the switch. And my question is, what condition would be there? Would have to be there for you not to have data movement when you're when you're putting data into another table? How can you not have data movement? The answer is when they're in the same file group. So if you try to put, if you try to switch it into a table that's on a different disk, right, in another file group, it's going to say, whoa, that's going to cause data movement because it's literally, it's, it's physically got to move the data over to that other disk, right? Right. But, but if it's in the same file group, it doesn't have to. It can be a, it can be just a metadata switch. Oh yeah, yep. Right. Okay. Uh, it depends upon where the new table is actually created. Exactly. It doesn't have to be in the same schema, but it does have to be in the same file group so that there's no data movement. Um, the other one, the other condition is that uh, you have to be copying it into an empty partition. So the second table can be partitioned. It can have multiple partitions. But as long as you're copying it into an empty partition, you're golden. And right this second, I can't remember if it's any, I, I don't think it's any uh, open partition. I think it's the, I think it has to be the, the open partition at the end, right? So it has to be the last empty partition. I think that's how it works. Um, I usually only do this for uh, one table to another. So if you're, say, for example, <clears throat> you want to back up a table because you're going to do something or you, you want to reload a table and you want to back up the current data as it is, right? You see this a lot in data warehouses, right? We used to do this all the time in, a data, in, in the data warehouse um, where you're going to completely reload the data, but you want to keep a a version of the data that's in there in case that load fails for some reason, you can get it back very quickly, right? You just switch it into the history table and it's done, boom, right? You don't have to copy 117 million rows. Even if you're doing a select into, that still takes time. But with something like this, it takes just seconds. So there's a huge advantage to understanding that uh, the tables are partitioned from the get-go, and you can do something like this to greatly 
enhance the performance of certain operations. Everybody good on that? Cool. Yeah. And you can just reverse this. I could just I could just switch this back into the original table if I wanted to, right? So it's not like um, it's not like once the data is there, it's gone for good. I can just switch it back and say, okay, now you belong to this table. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that real quick because it came up this morning, and I thought it was an uh, I thought it would be an excellent uh, an excellent uh, film. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs>